is the the vast majority. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something you strive yeah, for. Yeah, the only things that we are not manufacturing are the motors and uh, chips, basically. I mean, mm -hmm. there's probably a couple of the hoses. The concrete, we don't manufacture concrete hoses. I mean, like, the, sort of the obvious commercial off-the-shelf stuff, we just buy. But the, the bulk of the machine is, like, designed, made, fabricated, and then assembled by Icon employees. And, of course, the material totally developed in-house. Material totally developed in-house, and we're, we're even going to be moving up the supply chain and material in the coming six months to sort of gain some more control over that as well. And like mines? Uh, it's, it's certainly, we've certainly talked to them. That's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. And so because there's a lot of cost and margin in the supply chain of concrete, it turns out, and it's not clear that they're adding a lot of value. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like it came in one side, it went out the other side, and there's like a huge margin that gets added and the, the value that was added in that step doesn't seem to be proportional to the charge, except that they just can because they're the only ones doing it. Not wicked people, they're trying to run a good business. I'm not sort of mad about it, but I'm, what I'm driven to do is radically lower the cost and time of construction. So, Is there a future where Icon's processing lime? Uh, there's certainly a future where, where we're buying futures on raw materials. Yeah, that's very smart in this uh, inflationary environment. That's um, right. So the material, has it changed? the Material of this house versus the other homes on 17th Street. They, there are always changes there, but there are changes that would. It's more or less the same material, but we're like we're maybe sourcing a certain sand from somewhere slightly different because we like its performance better, or we found a supply that's closer to home and reduces shipping costs. But it's like the basic formula is the same. There will be a big shift in formulation in after the Lennar project. So we're going to hold what we got because it's really well tested and well understood. Mm -hmm through the Lennar project, we are going to be doing a big reformulation, um, mostly driven by a process that I was just, I don't want to say too much about, but it, it involves us like both simplifying the mix and then getting further up into the supply chain to control cost and supply. Um, I'm and going to say batch plant mixer and we can look back in a couple of years and see if it's relevant. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But next time we talk, you can see. Um, but we expect it to lower, our, it, we expect it to cut our cost more than in half um, by number one, simplifying the mix. Um, in other words, our early mixes are probably over-engineered on purpose. We sort of belts and suspenders, we want to make sure everything's great. But as you know more and you get more confidence in the behavior of extruded concrete, um, you can simplify the mix design over time. Uh, and then you want to then own uh, what you're doing with that mix. So that's the next step um, on the supply chain side to like radically decreasing cost. Absolutely. Um... A long journey yet. I mean, sort of the romantic idea still is like, Homes that are twice as good but are half as much. Right? <laughs> sort of that's that's the romantic idea, but um, we're not there yet. Uh, but we see a, a, ro a roadmap where there's still like very large gains to be made. Not like one and two percent, but like large double digit 20, 30, 50 percent gains to be made by, by doing uh, a few things.